O-N-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program coming to you from the Plaza Theater in Palm Springs, California, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with When the Midnight Choo Choo Leaves for Beaumont and Banning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, every time you enjoy Jell-O, it's just as though you were enjoying it again for the very first time. That's the same sense of pleasant surprise you felt when you first made the acquaintance of this swell dessert. For Jell-O is a treat you always welcome. No matter how often you serve Jell-O, no matter how many times it graces your table, Jell-O's bright, glowing colors are always enticing, and Jell-O's tempting flavor keeps right on delighting everybody with its refreshing goodness. In fact, Jell-O today actually tastes better than ever before because Jell-O's six delicious flavors have constantly been made more delicious. For example, take strawberry, raspberry, and cherry Jell-O. Each has a new, improved flavor obtained by using a natural flavor base artificially enhanced, and the result is something mighty distinctive. So enjoy Jell-O soon. Get several packages tomorrow and serve the family a grand treat with America's favorite gelatin dessert, Rich, shimmering jello. The Midnight Choo Choo leaves for Beaumont and Banning, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our master of ceremonies, toughened by the desert wind, tanned by the desert sun, and frightened by the desert prices, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jello again. This is Jack Benny, the sage of the sagebrush talking. And Don, I'm not the least bit frightened by the prices here in Palm Springs. After all, this is a resort. And when you're on a vacation, you expect to let yourself go and have a good time. But Jack, don't you think the hotels here are rather expensive? Not a bit, Don, considering what you get. Why, you take the El Mirador, the Desert Inn, the Colonial House, and places like that. They're the last word in swank and luxury. It's worth it. Oh, I agree with you there, Jack. By the way, you're stopping at the El Mirador, aren't you? Uh, no. Uh, no, Don, I have a lovely room at the T.P. Motel. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's a little bit out of town where it's not quite so crowded. I like it very much. The T.P. Motel, is that run by an Indian? No, it's run by a fellow named T.P. Ginsburg. <laughs> Uh, uh, Don, uh, Motel is his uncle oh. <laughs> However uh, <laughs> However, uh, come to uh, uh, Come to think of it, Don The uh, bellboys, the bellboys are Indian uh, Full-blooded, too Well, that's a novelty Novelty is right I left a call for 7 o'clock this morning And one of them came in and hit me on the head with a tomahawk <laughs> Darn near scalped me. By the way, Jack, I don't remember passing the T.P. Motel. Where's it located? Well, you know the road that leads to the... Uh, pardon me, Don. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? On behalf of the Palm Springs Chamber of Commerce, I want to welcome you to this desert paradise. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. By the way, I don't want to get personal, but how did you happen to lose your hair? I left a call for 7 o'clock. <laughs> Guy. 
That guy sure gets around, doesn't he? Huh? Uh, what was that you were saying, Don? Well, I asked you about that motel you're stopping at. Where's it located? Oh, the teepee. Well, um, uh, Don, here's how you get there. You know the street right out front here, the one that leads to Cathedral City. Oh, it's this side of Cathedral City. No, uh, no, Don. You go through Cathedral City. Oh. See? And then, and then you know how the road curves out and goes on to Indio. Indio? Why, you're not living way over in Indio, are you? Uh, no, uh, Don. You go through <laughs> Indio. You, uh, <laughs> look, uh, the way I can explain it, now, you stay on Highway 66, and the only delay is when they stop you at the Arizona border. <laughs> uh, you know, for plant inspection and things like oh, that. Oh, my goodness, Jack. You mean to tell me that while we're all in Palm Springs, you're living in Arizona? Sand is sand. I'm still on the desert. <laughs> Anyway, Don, I told you uh, every place here in Palm Springs is filled up. Uh, this is the height of the season. Well, look who's here. Hello, everybody. Well. Hello, Mary. Hiya, Don. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What are you doing in town? <laughs> I drive in nearly every day. What am I doing in town? Why don't you stay in Beverly Hills? That's closer to Palm Springs than where you're living now. <laughs> I couldn't stay in Beverly Hills because I sublet my house. Oh, fine. He's here for five days and he sublets his house. I might be here 14 days. Who knows? You even look for a tenant when you go out to lunch. <laughs> now you're reaching. <clears throat> well, Don, the minute Mary comes in, down goes McBenny. Yes, sir. By the way, Mary, I saw you on the street yesterday. You look very cute in your sun shorts. Thanks, Don. You look cute in yours, too. What? Don Wilson walking around town in a pair of shorts? <laughs> Boy, did he hold up traffic. I can imagine. You got a lot of nerve, Don, walking around in sun shorts. Well, Jack, everybody does it here. I know, but with your figure. Hey, that takes courage. What about you in that corny cowboy suit? Oh, I looked all right. And those high heel shoes you were wearing, wow. Well, now I've got you. For your information, young lady, all cowboys wear high heel shoes. With open toes, you're crazy. <laughs> Well, I had to cut them. They hurt my feet. What a cowboy. You should have seen him, Don, swaggering around town with two guns in his belt. Three. One is a cigarette lighter. <laughs> anyway, Miss Livingston, as long as you're so cute, the next time we go horseback riding, you can very well pay for your half of the horse. Smarty. Why, Jack, do you mean to say that you and Mary were both riding on one horse? Not only that, Dennis Day was the horse. <laughs> That was only for practice. We got a real nag later. Yeah, later. Oh, hello, Dennis. How are you? Gee, is my back swayed. <laughs> well, Dennis. Dennis, here you are in Palm Springs. How do you like it? Oh, it's swell here. But I was sure glad when it stopped raining. <laughs> Dennis, it never rains in Palm Springs. This is a desert. Well, it was sure misty the first part of the week. <laughs> it wasn't even misty. You see, Dennis, uh, Palm Springs owes its hot, uh, dry climate to the mountains that surround it. Like a storm approaching from the Pacific Ocean is always stopped by these high peaks. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's never, thing, there's never anything over Palm Springs but a great big bright sun. Well, they ought to put a cork in it. <laughs> oh, stop complaining. <laughs> you find fault every place. We're all having a wonderful time here. Say, hey, Dennis, where are you staying? I'm living with Mr. Benny, far, far away. <laughs> Yes, uh, we couldn't get a place right here in town, so Dennis is with me at the T.P. Motel. It's nice there, isn't it, Dennis? I'll say. We saw the swellest movie in Phoenix last night. <laughs> well, we made it in no time. Gee whiz, Jack. 
Aren't you lonesome living so far away from everybody? No, we like to rough it. We've even got Indian bellboys. Gosh, am I lucky. I told him to wake me up at 7 o'clock this morning, and I didn't even feel it. Well, Dennis, you're the only guy I know of that sleeps with his hat on. And now that you're here, how about singing a number for all of our Palm Springs guests? Okay. I've had a lot of requests to sing Perfidia again. All right. Let's have it. Now, what's that? Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. I'll take it. Hey, buddy, you got a little more hair than the other fellow that was in here. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you? Yeah, I left the call for 7.30. <laughs> I'm up at half past eight myself. Uh, who's the wire from? <laughs> uh, who's the wire from, Mary? Gee, we're having fun tonight, aren't we? Huh? Who's the wire from, Mary? <laughs> it's from the Paramount Studio, the wardrobe department. The wardrobe department? Yeah, it says, uh, Dear Mr. Benny, new Hopalong Cassidy picture goes into production tomorrow morning. Please return cow suit immediately. A cowboy suit. Cow suit. That cowboy suit. Who ever heard of a cow suit? All right, sing, Dennis. Burn me up. They promised me I could have it for two weeks. Faded like a broken melody And the gods of love look down and laugh At what romantic fools we mortals see And now I know my love was not for you And so I take it back with a sigh Have pity on me With a sad lament, my dreams are faded like a broken melody. And the gods of love look down and laugh at what romantic fools we mortals be. And now I know my love was not for you. And so I'll take it back with a sigh. Perfidia means goodbye. sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, you were in very good form. This uh, dry desert air is marvelous for your tonsils. I haven't got any tonsils. <laughs> oh, I... I didn't know that. And now, ladies and gentlemen... I had them taken out about three years ago. <laughs> oh. Oh, I... I see. And now, ladies and gentlemen... You're not mad, are you? <laughs> no. Of course not. You can have your tonsils out if you want to. I had mine out. And by a wonderful doctor. Doctor nothing. Rochester took them out. <laughs> he did not. I finally wound up going to the doctor. You know that. Well, you were considering, Rochester. Oh, considering. I asked him if he knew how. That was all. <laughs> 
considering. Isn't it amazing, Don? All I said to Dennis was, this desert air is wonderful for your tonsils, and look at the routine we got in. You know? Speaking of the desert, ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you about Jell-O, America's favorite dessert. For even though you're on a desert, do not desert this appetizing dessert. As Jell-O is not only good in the city, but also a desert dessert. Don, what's going on here? So remember, ladies and gentlemen, whether you like desserts or deserts, Jell-O is the finest desert dessert, this deserted desert. I mean, this deserted dessert. I mean, this I deserted dessert. I knew he'd get mixed up. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. You couldn't quit when you were winners, could you, Don? <laughs> well, gee, Jack, that was a mighty tough one, really a tongue twister. What's hard about it? You think that's tough? Listen to this. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. How's that? Fine, I'll pick up your teeth. <laughs> I didn't drop them. Larry, why is it every time I open my mouth, you try and top me? Now, you just behave yourself. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Phil. Howdy, folks. How about giving out with a root and toot and western reception, huh? <laughs> well, how's that for an ovation, Jackson? Gunshots and everything. What do you mean, ovation? They were shooting at that Marcel wave in your hair. <laughs> we don't go for male beautifying around these parts, stranger. No, sir. Hello, Phil. I haven't seen you around all week. Yes, we were looking for you. Where are you living? I'm stopping out here at a dud ranch. <laughs> well, you mean dude ran No, dud, there ain't a dame on the place <laughs> Oh Well, that's too bad huh? Say, Jackson, uh, where are you living? Well, I couldn't get a place right here in town, Phil So I'm staying at the T.P. Motel The T.P. Motel, where's that? It's just this side of Birmingham, Alabama <laughs> Oh, stop, will you? <laughs> Alabama. That's a big fib, isn't it, Dennis? It sure is. <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> Dennis, don't be funny or I'll take off my shoe and give you a call for 7 <laughs> o'clock right now. Say, Phil, you know, this vacation is doing you a world of good. You look much better here at the Springs than you do in Hollywood. Yeah, I do look healthier, don't I? No, you, you don't look healthy, Phil. Here's what I mean. You see, in Hollywood, you always look like you had a bad night. But here, you look like you had a bad night with the window open. <laughs> there, uh, there is a difference, believe me. Well, you see, Jackson, I've been getting a lot of rest here in Palm Springs. How do you like my tan? What tan? Tan little fingers and tan little toes. They tell a little Well, there's a Greyhound bus <laughs> leaves here in five minutes. Be on it. <laughs> but I'm... <laughs> I'm serious, Phil. You've got the wrong slant on the kind of life to lead down here. What do you mean? Well, while you're out here on the desert, you ought to get some exercise. Now, take me, for instance. The minute I get hit on the head with that tomahawk, I jump out of bed raring to go. The first thing I do is put on my shorts and go for a long hike. No kidding. And then I put on my cowboy suit, jump on a horse, and away I go across the wide open spaces. Then I put on my bathing trunks. Over your cowboy suit? No, I take that off. <laughs> then I put on my bathing trunks and swim all afternoon. Boy, I swim till it's time to go to bed. Then he puts on his nightshirt and walks in his sleep. <laughs> I do not. Well, you're going pretty fast there, Jackson. Don't you ever relax and take it easy? Sure. Lots of nights I sit around and play cards with Dennis. I'm teaching him gin rummy. Hey, kid? I thought we were playing bridge. No, 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 no. Uh, gin rummy, the dunes is closed, you know. <laughs> anyway, there's nothing else to do at the TP. Well, then why are you living way out there, Jackson? What's the sense of it? Phil, I've explained the whole thing to Don. I tried to get a room here in town. Everything was filled up. Well, I can't understand that. The little woman and I got a beautiful bungalow at the La Paz Guest Ranch. It's expensive, but it's worth it. Well, you're you're very lucky, Don. And I have a lovely apartment at the Lone Palm. It's not cheap, but look what you get. Well, you're lucky, too. But those are the breaks a fella gets, that's all. You kids were fortunate enough to get swell accommodations, and 
I have to live in a dinky little auto court. Why don't you loosen up, bub? <laughs> Dennis, it's not a question of money. I'd much rather be here in town. Well, Jackson, if you want to live in a high-class place, let me call up Charlie Farrell at the racket club. He's got tennis courts and everything. The, um... Uh... Racket club, eh? Yeah, it'll cost you dough, but it's worth every penny of it. Oh. Well, well, let's have an orchestra number, Phil, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about it later, huh? <laughs> well, wait a minute, Jackson. I better give that club a buzz right now. I'm sure they'll have a room for you. Oh, then again, they may not, and I'll be disappointed. No. You, uh, you better play something, Phil. Oh, Jack, let him make the reservation. Never mind. You've got two guns. You can always kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, I said he can call up after the program. This is much more important. Now, let's have some music. Okay. I was wondering, Mr. Benny, how much do I owe you for gin rummy? Uh, $30,000. Play, Phil. I've had enough trouble with tenors. I'm going to keep this one. <laughs> There'll be some changes made played by Phil Harris and his orchestra who haven't got changed for a quarter. <laughs> you know, Phil, uh, you know, even your boys, though, they look much better out here on the desert. I don't know, in Hollywood, they always look so pale and haggard. You're right, Jackson. This climate is good for them. Sure is. Look at your guitar player there. Gee, his face is as red as a beet. Where'd he get that tan? He passed out in front of a fireplace. <laughs> I like that screen effect. He looks like a waffle there. <laughs> Say, Jack, uh, you know what I did? What? While Phil was playing his band number, I sat down and wrote a beautiful poem all about Palm Springs. Well, if you wrote it that quick, it can't be any good. Say, Don... Oh, it's awfully cute, Jack. Let me read it. I told you, Mary, we don't want to hear your poem. You let me read it or I'll get you a room at the racket club. <laughs> <laughs> all right, read it. What's the title of your little masterpiece? Did you ever see a palm springing? Oh. <laughs> well, that's silly enough to begin with. Go ahead. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, take a trip to old Palm Springs in the desert, oh, so sandy. But don't forget to bring your rubbers. You will find they come in handy. <laughs> Mary, it's not raining here anymore. How I love your talk with falls and your Indians whom I talk with. <laughs> talk with? <laughs> Hawkwits. Oh, my goodness. And I love your ice cream sodas. You take vanilla and I'll take chocolate. <laughs> well, that did it. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Hey, Jackson, I'll let the kid finish her poem. Yes, go ahead, Mary. Oh. About Palm Springs, I shall... Palm Springs? <laughs> About Palm Springs, I shout with glee. It certainly is the place to be. 
For Don and Phil and little me, but Jack always stays where it's next to free. I try to get a room in town. How many times do I have to tell you? Phil, call up the racket club, will you? Okay, Jackson, and I'll get you the best bungalow in the place. I'm sick of these insinuations around here. Hello, operator, get me the racket club. Hold it, hold it. I forgot to bring my tennis shoes. Oh. <laughs> That's too bad, Phil, but I did. Boy, that was a close one. <laughs> oh, quiet. Phil, I'll send for my tennis shoes, and then you can call up. Let me finish my poem, will you? Oh, yes. Go ahead. So I'll return to old Palm Springs when the cactus is in bloom. And the... There's the phone. I'll take it. Maybe it's the club. Yeah. Hello? 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 Hello, boss. This is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, where are you calling from? I'm over here at the TV Motel. How's the weather in California? <laughs> it's nice here. Incidentally, I thought I told you to come to Palm Springs and pick me up. I had an accident with the car, boss. One of these Indians around here shot an arrow right through the gas tank. Through the gas tank? Was he intoxicated? No, he thought the Maxwell was a buffalo. <laughs> now, that's just silly. My Maxwell, a buffalo. Well, they're both darn near extinct. <laughs> Never mind. Now, Rochester, you get right out and fix that gas tank. With all those arrows flying around, I ain't gonna bend over. <laughs> Now, Rochester, I don't want any more stalling. So get over here because I'm tired and I want to get to bed. I can get you a room at the racket club. The MC in the washroom is a pal of mine. <laughs> Thanks just the same. But do as I tell you. Now, come on into town. Okay, but I can't leave for a little while, boss. I'm under the sun lamp. <laughs> under the sun lamp? Yeah, I want my friends to know I've been on the desert. All right, but hurry up. And incidentally, Rochester, I want you to pack up my cowboy suit and send it back to Hollywood. Paramount wants it. The 10-gallon hat, too? Yes. I'm soaking your socks in there. Well, take them out. And listen, Rochester, when you get to Palm Springs, you'll find me waiting in front of the theater. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. What? Have we got any use for a gross of peace pipes? A gross of peace pipes? Yeah, I just won them in a crap game Rochester, I told you not to gamble with those Indians Well, they got a lot of wampum I don't care I'm teaching them gin rummy Now, goodbye So long, boss that kills me. He stays there gambling, and I'll be stuck here till all hours of the night. So I'll return to old Palm Springs when the cactus is in bloom. Oh, stop with that poem. Play, Phil. When the cactus is in bloom. Oh. You sure make Longfellow look like a nickel. Nowadays, the farm to great food is not only grand for breakfast, but equally delicious and served at other meals as an appetizer, salad, or dessert. For example, in thousands of homes these days, a big favorite is Jell-O Cherry and Grapefruit Mold, a shining ruby red mold of clear cherry Jell-O nestling in a golden circle of tender, juicy grapefruit sections. As for making it, well, nothing could be simpler. Just prepare one package of cherry Jell-O as you usually do, turn into a mold and chill until firm. Then unmold and arrange grapefruit sections around the gracefully shaped mound of Jell-O, a swell treat the whole family will love. So tomorrow, brighten the dinner table with one of the finest, most successful desserts you ever served Jello cherry and grapefruit mold. This is the last number of the 21st program in the current Jello series. And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting once more from Palm Springs. Hey, Jackson, you want me to call up the racket club now? I'll talk to you about it later, Phil. Uh, good night, folks. 